So I want to take a moment today to share some good news, the good news. And I'm sure you've heard that phrase before. It sounds a little corny or cheesy, but there's sometimes something missing from the good news we share about God's plan for our life. And that's the fact that there was some bad news that preceded the good news. So let me share in a nutshell why God allows these crazy things to happen and, and what has separated us from God and how we can reconnect with him in a really meaningful way that literally enhances our life, not only today, but for all of eternity. Now, I don't know about you. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. I didn't have any Sunday school. And so when I started seeking God, I was a woman in my early 20s struggling with really debilitating panic attacks. I thought I was dying. I thought I was losing my mind for five years. They were unrelenting. And it scared me. I had to face off my mortality. I thought, what if I do die? Where will I go? What will happen? I had this innate belief there was a God and, and that God existed, but I really didn't know that he even knew who I was. I didn't know how to connect with him. So one night I was having the most massive panic attack ever. I literally in that moment thought I was dying. And as I was trying to catch my breath and you know, probably was hyperventilating and was gonna pass out, but I didn't know that. I thought of one woman, I know God brought her to mind. Her name is Tanette, and she was the only woman, the one and only woman in my entire life that I could say knew God. I would have called her religious back then. And I just thought, you know what, I've been going to doctors because I think there's something wrong with me physically and they can't find anything. I've been going to psychologists and psychiatrists and they haven't helped me and I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like I'm certainly gonna die sometimes. Only you can help me, God. I remember looking up at the ceiling in my bedroom and saying, only you can help me, God. But I don't even know if you hear me. And so I found my little address book. This is back in the 70s. And I looked up Tonette's name and I called her up and I was on my phone and I was, must have sounded like a crazy woman because I was like, Tonette, Tonette, this is Dana Dimitri. I don't know if you remember me, but do you know God? And Tonette said to me, yes, Dana, I know God. But more importantly, God knows you. Well, let me back up a little bit on the bad news. When God created the, the world, we know in Genesis, most of you, even if you've never read the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When God created the world, he created it in perfection. And it says that he created man and woman in his own image. Why? I don't know. Was God bored? He's perfect. I don't, I don't know. But God decided to create this world and put human beings in it, created after his own image, and he clearly wanted to have relationship with us. Now, remember when you were a little girl, I don't know about you, but I had some baby dolls. And, you know, the little ones that used to have the, the little fake bottles, and, and sometimes some of them even would wet their pants. In my day, they didn't because I'm too old. I'm 68, but I know my grandkids had those. Uh, but you had baby dolls. But when we grow up, we don't want a baby doll because it was fake. It wasn't real. It was a toy. We want the real thing. And the thing about a real human being is they can embrace you, and love you or they can reject you. So God, when he created us, decided to create us with a free will so we could choose. We could choose to love him and move toward him or pull away from him. If he created us like little Stepford children, just programmed, what's the value in that? So when God created Adam and Eve, he used to walk with them in the coolness of the garden at night. He put them in this beautiful garden, the Garden of Eden, that had everything they wanted. They didn't have to toil after their food. It was all there on the trees. But he gave them one opportunity to exercise free will. The free will that gives us the opportunity to love and to connect and all those things. But he had to give us a choice to exercise that free will. And all he said was, eat from every tree in the garden, but do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because when you eat from that tree, if you eat from that tree, you will surely die. Well, you know the story, whether you've ever been you know, to Sunday school or not, we all know the story. The serpent, representing Satan, tempted Eve, told her God was lying. Oh no, God doesn't want you to eat from that tree because then you'll be like him. The tree is good fruit. You should eat from it. And Eve caved in. She handed off the fruit to Adam. He caved in. Later he blamed her and that was that's a whole nother drama for another day. But what happened in that moment? In that moment, 
that human beings exercise their free will against God. Rip! It separated them from God. First of all, their bodies became mortal. They didn't die in that instant, but they began to die. Just like all of us, you know, as we grow older and older, have you noticed everybody dies? And so the bad news, the bad news was when we exercised our free will against God and broke that one rule he set, we brought what's called sin into the world. Sin is rebellion against God. And ever since then, we've all been, all of humanity has been contaminated with sin. And don't get me wrong, you can blame Adam and Eve all day long, but you probably would have done the same thing. It says in the Bible, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. I remember years ago when Tonette told me that, that everybody, everybody failed. Everybody was separated from God because of their sin. I remember thinking, even Billy Graham? She said, yeah, even Billy Graham. And so I was like, okay, why are you telling me this bad news? I thought you were going to tell me how to find God. She said, you know, calm down, Dan, and just listen. She said, God is a perfect God. He's perfect and he's holy and he's righteous. But our sin, our rebellion, separates us from him. And he says that the wage of sin, the price for sin, is death. But he goes on to say, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So what does that mean? When Adam and Eve sinned, it separated them from God. They actually realized in that moment they were naked and they were ashamed. They were naked the whole time. But they didn't have any way to see the negative in that. It was all so innocent and beautiful. So we start to see the negativity of who we are. We start to realize that sometimes we don't have pure thoughts, that we don't always want to do the right thing. And so all of us are born in this contaminated state and in this state of sin, the whole world fell back at the, or it's called the original fall. And then there became pestilence. It, uh, God told man that he would have to toil for his food. He told women that they would have pain in childbirth. He basically said, you've created this, this problem, and now life is not going to be so easy, and you're ultimately going to die. But again, that, that Price for sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. What does that mean? God says that a, a death has to occur, a price has to be paid. So in the old days, there were sacrifices. And I know that sounds archaic and it sounds ruthless and, and yucky, but God said there had to be a spilling of blood for sin. And so every year, the Jewish people would sacrifice, the, the priests would sacrifice on behalf of the Jewish people to cover their sin for the year. But God had a better plan from the beginning. He wasn't going to have animal sacrifices be the permanent solution. It says in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So how could Jesus pay the price? What you need to realize is Jesus is God with flesh on. God reduced himself into the form of a man. It's like uh, us being reduced to the form of a snail or a slug. God allowed himself to be born through the Virgin Mary and actually experience everything we humans experience. He was 100% God and 100% man, so he could feel pain and sadness, and he had a free will. But he lived the perfect life. And because he lived without sin for those 33 years, he was the perfect sacrifice. He came specifically to die to die for you and to die for me. And so that night as I talked to Tonette on the phone and she told me first the bad news that I was separated from God from my sin. And trust me, back in those days, I was doing so many crazy things. I could totally uh, acknowledge I was a sinner. But then she gave me the good news. The good news is that God so loved me that he allowed his son to live that perfect life, to willingly go to the cross, hang on that cross and die for my sins. Jesus died for my sins and for your sins, past, present, today, and even those you will commit in the future. God is allowing right now, in this current age, the ravages of sin to kind of play out. Does he intervene sometimes? Yes, he does. Does he heal? Yes, he does. Does he forgive? Absolutely. Do we realize all the blessings and all the healing this side of heaven? Not always. 
And so if you're wringing your hands and wondering, where is God in all this? Trust me when I say he is right here with you. Jesus not only died for your sins so you can be forgiven and have eternal life, he rose to new life. He died and he rose again in three days so we can have newness of life. So how do you know you have a personal relationship with Jesus? It says that when we confess with our lips and believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, we are saved. It's not trying to figure out every theological question you've ever had, because trust me, I've been a Christian since my early 20s, over 40 years, and I still have questions. God says in Jeremiah, if you seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you. So if you're a woman struggling with really having a personal relationship with God, first of all, let me tell you, that can only be realized through the person of Jesus Christ, God in the flesh. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man or woman comes to God except through me. I know that seems narrow. It is narrow. And people say, you know, that's not very inclusive, Dana. Well, take that up with God. I don't know why God did it that way. I don't believe in what I call Burger King religion. Have it your way. You can't pick and choose. You have to decide what is the foundation of your faith. Well, to me, it's all found in the Word of God. If you study out the Word of God, you will find out that there are so many prophecies about Jesus' birth, his life, and his death and resurrection that were prophesied hundreds of years before it ever happened. If you are a person that just has so many questions and you need those answers, read books like A Case for Faith and A Case for Christ by Lee Strobel, or More Than a Carpenter by Josh McDowell. But the truth is, you don't have to have all those answers. What you have to do is ask God to give you the faith to believe and to understand just a couple things. One, that God loves you and he created you uh, in perfection and wants to have a relationship with you. Two, that he is holy and perfect and our sin separates us. So we acknowledge that we're a sinner. We believe and choose to accept that Only the blood of Jesus dying on the cross is enough to forgive us of our sins. And so we accept that free gift. It's as simple as that. You don't have to jump through a lot of hoops. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's just something that you can repeat in the silence of your own heart and mind that will basically acknowledge to God what I've just said. Before I pray with you, I do want to tell you one thing. Walking with God and having a relationship through Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross does not mean your life is going to be perfect. It does not mean it's going to be without pain. In fact, there is a lot of pain in life. It means that you're not going to be alone and that God is intervening and giving you strength through the whole process of life, giving you hope and truth every step of the way. If you'd like to pray to receive Christ, please join me in this prayer and repeat silently these words after me. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love me so much that you sent Jesus Christ to die for me. I confess that I have sinned and rebelled against you, and I want to ask you into my heart. I receive the free gift of forgiveness and eternal life from Jesus, and I pray you would come in and make me new. I pray that you would help me understand who you are and help me to understand what your word says in the Bible. I receive your free gift, and I want to walk with you the rest of the days of my life. Help me grow and become the woman you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I would love nothing more than to hear from you directly. If you'll email me at dana at danadimitri.com, I'd love to connect with you and see how I can pray for you specifically and maybe point you in a couple directions to get started on your faith walk. God bless.